Hey, hello, and welcome to another week of uh, Wild Art Sessions. Um, I thought we'd break with uh, the original plan on this and do um, a sort of an extension on the Harry Potter theme um, and do a phoenix eye. So um, kind of as if it's, it's Fawkes' eye, possibly Fawkes from Harry Potter. Um, I think the eyes, we'll, we'll keep going back to eyes as we go along. We'll do some landscapes, we'll do some other things, but um, eyes just work so well because there aren't too many aspects that you need to outline really clearly. Um, and you can just sort of get into the textures and the bits of detail within just a few spaces. Um, so I thought we'd, we'd come back to that for this week. And this, this might be the easiest so far, so definitely one for um, younger children to have a, a go at as well. But for older children, certainly you can extend it and make it as detailed as you want. Okay, cool. So for today, we'll need again that round thing to draw around to get the sort of basic outline of our eye. Um, a bit of card. Um, ideally with a, a brownish colour to it as our background. Um, palette wise we could do with some yellow, some red, some white, some black and some blue. Um, that medium sized brush and a pot of water and a pencil for doing a little bit of outlining with. And I think that's it for today's. Fairly straightforward. Cool. Let's give it a whirl. Okay, right. Let's um, take our round thing. So this could be a mug or um, a glass. And let's get our circle roughly in the middle of our bit of card again. So I'm gonna do mine on the inside of that. Okay, so this is now the, the basic shape of our eye, but we want to come, yeah, straight out, pretty much straight out from the back. This will be similar to the dragon's eye. And then down like that. So we've got sort of a triangle coming out of top, top right of the eye. And then um, we'll do the same down to the left, but actually, so we can do that lower part. On this left hand part, we want to come straight out from the top because we're going to have um, quite a deep brow of this uh, phoenix eye. So actually coming almost straight out, but maybe slightly sloping down from that top part of your circle, and then just cut down like that. And that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's gonna be the initial outline of our eye. And we'll get all the detail in there that we need later on. But the last thing we'll do with the pencil is we'll just come from this corner that we've made here. So it's out from the circle down to around there. And we're just gonna take a line down to the bottom left corner of our bit of card and that's going to help guide us as to the direction that the feathers are going in and then we're going to do the same thing from this top corner here we're just going to come out towards the back and maybe slightly up just slightly up like that okay so again we're going to there's going to be one direction of brush strokes of feathers up over the top section here and it will be a different direction of brush strokes in this lower section. So we've just kind of got one, two, three areas to be working in for this. Okay. Okay, so to start with, I want us to mix up a bit of our black and blue. And it sort of will end up being a grayish color. And we're going to do um, just a blocking in of the whole of the eye area for now. So what I'd suggest, you want to mix in a little bit of water but not too much so it moves smoothly. So I suggest as usual doing the, the outline first. And then you can relax once you go into the eye itself. So this bottom part is along that curve and then up to the back. Okay. Right, so once we've got to that stage, let's just thicken this up a little bit, we can just block it in. And into that space, um, we'll be getting some darker tones and we'll of course be getting some lighter tones for highlights within the eye as well. Okay. 
Okay, that will do for now. Okay, once that's dry, we're going to use a similar colour, but we want to mix in just a bit of white to it. We're going to lighten it up, maybe brighten it up a bit with a tiny bit of the blue. Okay, hopefully that will be about right. Hmm. Okay. Right, so with that colour, we're going to start with a big line, fairly thick line, up over the top of our eye. So above what we've done there, above the outline. So bring it all the way along the top, and this is going to be the, the brow of the phoenix, so all the way to the back, and then just a little flick once we're at the back. Okay, with that same colour, we're going to now do a line kind of cutting through this area here. So coming from around there, just a little bit further back along the top, and then down to that corner. Just a straight line, maybe not quite all the way to the top. So we're showing that the light doesn't quite catch that top bit. And then we're going to do a similar thickness, so this is a bit thinner, all the way along, but not quite to the edge. We want to leave just a little bit of that darker tone so that we've got a clearer um, outline to this, this aspect of the eye. Okay, so all the way to the back and maybe slightly in. Okay, now what? I'm going to have a go at myself, and you're welcome to, is just lightening that up a tiny bit more. And we're just going to do a couple of bits that are catching the light a bit more at this stage with this colour. So I think maybe along this top line of the brow, it's catching the light a little bit more. And then possibly just along this lower part here, it's catching the light a little bit more. Okay, right, I'm going to leave that there now, so give that a couple of seconds to dry. Okay, we're going to move away from the eye for a bit, and we'll come back to it at the end. Um, we're going to start with some of the feather work. So I'm going to take some of the yellow, and I want to lighten it up a bit, so I'm going to take some of my white, and mix that in, maybe a touch more. Okay, that's probably about right. So you need a little bit of water in there just to make sure it moves smoothly as well, but always wipe off the excess to avoid blob uh, blobbing of the paint or running of the paint. Okay, so with that diagonal line that we drew down, above it we want to be doing some flicks of our brush. So some nice thin flicks going basically fairly straight up. I'm going to mix in a tiny bit more white to that. Lighten it up a bit. Okay, so once you've done one um, layer of those going up that line, you can just follow that same um, system in doing extra layers. And these are quite little brush strokes at this stage. So that's layer number two, do layer number three. As they go away from that line, you can do slightly bigger brush strokes. And these, as you can see, they're slightly overlapping one another. As we come towards that top line of the eye. And we're going to, I think, maybe just do one more set. I think I'll leave it there. Okay. Right, so for you guys now, if you want to, you can twist the card to make this next bit easier, but I'll try and do it like this. So on the other side of the line, we're going to do what's essentially the mirror image direction of these brush strokes. So kind of going almost backwards towards the right hand side of the card. And the same idea again, we've done that first strip 
and now we can do another strip slightly overlapping into our first strip. with yours if you want to make them slightly curved and slightly more interesting in a few you know let's have a go at this doing a few different directions probably like this that would look a little bit more realistic than just all of them in very straight lines so there as a general rule and this would be the case for feathers or fur as a general rule they're going in a particular direction but of course there's going to be some variation around that and um, if you do vary it a little bit, it makes it just a bit more realistic, a bit more natural. So let's just do that with a few above the line as well. Let's just go over slightly lighter paint. I'm just going to change the direction a little bit of a few of them to make it a bit more natural and therefore a bit more realistic. Okay. But remember to leave those gaps, that's what we've talked about in the past, it's really important to leave the gaps between your brush strokes so that each brush stroke is visible. And so often I think that's the case with painting, it's nice to be able to see the brush strokes. Right, so I'm just going to do one more little bit at this central point along the line that's lighter still. Have a go at that, so mix in a bit more white to your yellow and just go over a few of them along that central line to lighten that up just a bit, just a touch. And that shows where sort of the crease is for the change in direction of feathers going down from um, the eye of the phoenix towards the, the beak itself. Okay, let's give that a moment to dry. Okay. We're now going to start with some of the feathers up over the top of the eye. So let's get a good amount of the yellow and sort of drag that out and take some red. Let's mix that in to make an orange, but I think an orange that's slightly more on the yellow side of the scale than the red side of the scale at this stage. Okay, right. Up over the top of the eye, we're going to do our first layer of feathers from the front here. We've got um, building work going on at the moment, which is an absolute dream while having a newborn in lockdown as well. Okay, so let's go from that front part and carry on the flicks where we were. But once we reach the top of the eye, we're going to carry on up over the top. And as we head back towards the back of the eye, your flicks will slightly lean back a bit more. So they've started going quite straight up and then towards the back here, they're going a little bit more diagonally towards this top right corner and eventually down to meet this line. Okay, so that's our first layer. Right, with our second layer, I'm going to mix in just a tad more red. And we're going to go up over the top of that whole layer of brush strokes that we've done, but with slightly bigger flicks. A bit more water because that wasn't moving quite smoothly enough. So slightly bigger flicks as we go away. But remember to try and keep those gaps between the brush strokes so we've got that texture. Okay, same again. Let's move, um, mix in a little bit more red. And we're going to go up over the top again, but slightly bigger brush strokes still. This should be good practice, hopefully, for regulating um, your brush stroke size and the pressure that you place as well, which is an important part of improving your painting technique is to be able to regulate the size of brush stroke. OK, same again, mix in a bit more red and up over. And I'm going to just do that same thing now of just changing the direction 
of my brush strokes just a little bit to make it a bit more realistic so not all in the absolute same direction. They're going in generally the same direction but not precisely. Okay, for that last layer I think I want just an interesting mix. So I'm going to dab into the yellow and the red and just have both on the brush but not mix them too much and let's just see what happens with that. Okay, let's mix in a bit more of the yellow. And a bit more of the red. So at this stage, let's just, yeah, mix it up a little bit and see what happens if we have different mixes of the yellow and the red on the brush. Just makes it a bit more interesting. So come up over the top there. Okay. Right, so that's that top layer of feathers now complete. Okay, we're going to do something similar under the eye now, but um, we'll mix it up a little bit. So let's start with quite a sort of reddish orange. And we want to come from where we've already done our brush strokes, but actually I think let's change the angle slightly from under the eye. Come all the way along. And again, these are starting to curve um, back towards this side of the, the card a little bit more as we get around towards the back. And they curve, as we get towards the very back of the eye, they curve slightly up like that. Okay, let's do a few of those just sort of going into the, the yellow there. Okay, I think let's change it up now, so wash off the brush. And let's do the next layer more yellowish. Okay. So we'll come into our lines from the first layer, leaving those gaps slightly overlapping. And that same array of directions coming towards the back of the eye. Okay. Let's go back towards the more orange end of the scale and do our next layer. Let's get a bit more. And we can start to change the direction of our brush stroke again a little bit to make it a bit more natural looking. Okay, all the way towards the back and coming up to meet that back line. Right, so we'll go back towards the yellow again, I think, at this point. Actually, they need to be slightly bigger brush strokes at this point, don't they? So as you go further away from the eye, your brush strokes become bigger, and the feathers become bigger. towards the back there. Okay, I think my next one's going to be more vibrant red. Right, so let's come under again. You can see I'm twisting the brush to get an angle that suits me best. If you've got a rounded brush, there's less um, difference that it will make twisting it, but it still might make a bit of difference. So if you find that you are struggling with the accuracy of the brush, give it a twist and see where that gets you. Okay, back towards the yellow, but maybe not full yellow at this stage. Let's just finish off these last few layers and whatever works for you really, you can keep alternating or you could work towards um, just a sort of a, 
a brighter red as you head out. That suits or brighter yellow for that matter. I think I'm going to stick with the red at this stage. The last few brush strokes coming into the that front area there. Leaving those gaps, always leaving the gaps, and making the brush strokes go in roughly the direction that the, the trend is. Okay, right, let's leave that there, leave it to dry. Okay, we're now going to work with some of the black and we're going to introduce some shadow areas. I'm going to take a bit and actually for this first um, use of the black, let's water it down a bit. Basically that will just make it not quite so dark. You've got an option, if you want to lighten something, one option is to add white, but if you add white you change the colour slightly. And another option is just to add water, and that lightens either the colour or the tone of um, what you're using. And often I go with that latter option of adding water, but if you want a real vibrancy, then um, water does dull that slightly. Okay, so with that lightened down black, our first thing we're going to do is go up over the top of the eye, up over this brow, and just do a few little flecks in that same direction that we've already done them. But these ones are quite precise. This is where if you want to use a pencil crayon or something else you can to get that those neater lines and up towards the back and we'll leave that around there. Okay, make a little bit more black across. Okay, we're going to do the same sort of thing underneath. So coming from the front of the eye, little flecks going down into the feathers that we've already done. And these are much smaller than the flex that we've previously done. Up towards the back, following that same direction of brush stroke that we've already done. Okay, I think that will do. Okay, we want to darken it up now. Okay, so we're going to take basically the pure black. This is where it gets a bit risky, but when it comes to art and painting especially, you have to be bold sometimes. You can't be too cautious. Okay, with that full black, our first thing is going to be coming from that very front of our brow all the way under that initial big blue line that we did. Tracing all the way underneath, all the way across, and up, and we'll go underneath it for that flick as well at the back, to show that that's really dark, really in shadow. Okay, right, similarly, we're going to come down on top of that line, in that front area. Maybe just shade a bit of that in there. Okay, and then all the way around the inside of this line that we did. So again, if you feel you would prefer to use pencil, crayon, or even pen for that matter at this stage, by all means do so. If you have a thinner brush and you feel more confident using a thinner brush, go for it. A lot of this is up to you, I'm just giving you some ideas and then it's for you to think how to use those. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Right, next aspect, quite tricky. So, you want to come from this point here, so where that line reaches the top, and we're going to do a curved line, almost like a bracket, coming out from there and curving down to the bottom. This is going to be part of the outline of our iris. Once you've done it, just have a bit of a look and see whether it's curved at the right angle. 
And if it's not, try and make a little adjustment. Let's darken that up. Okay, and then similar at the back, but actually probably at the back, just at that very back end, because we're trying to imagine this being a circle um, that's slightly cut off by different aspects of the eye, like it's slightly cut off at the top by the brow, and it's slightly cut off at the bottom by this bottom lid as well. So actually the circle doesn't go all the way around. Yeah, aspects of a cut off at the top and the sides and the bottom. Okay, that's, I think that's about right. Right, our last bit with the black. First thing to do, probably, um, is to try and find exactly the middle of your circle. And remember, this will be slightly more towards the top, because the top is more cut off, cut off than the bottom. So the middle of the circle, for me, it's hard to say, but I reckon it's about, about there. Maybe about there. Okay, so around that, we now need to draw a smaller circle. And this is, this is the pupil of the eye. So it needs to be roughly a circle going around that dot that you've made where you found the middle of the eye. You might want to draw it in, in pencil first. And that way you can double check that it's where you want it to be. Okay, once you're happy with that, let's fill it in. Okay, so that pupil's nearly dry. We're just going to finish off using the black. I've decided that a few areas need to be just a little bit darker, I think. So let's fill in this front part. I think that needs doing. And a little bit more there. And let's fill in this back area as well. Okay, I reckon that's about right. If you can see any other areas yourself where you think they need a little bit more shadow, you could always go cautiously first with pencil, crayon or pen, um, or even the lighter black, and then you could always go more boldly afterwards once you're confident that that area needed more shadow. Okie doke, right, we're going to move in on the detail of the eye now, and I think, I don't know what colour Phoenix's eyes are supposed to be, but Let's face it, it's a fantasy creature, so it could be anything. I think it would look most dramatic if we made it green, because it would contrast um, as much as possible with the, the reds that we've got around. Because I think I'm right in saying green is the complementary colour to red. Okay, so if we mix up a sort of mid-green at this stage, so some of the blue and the yellow. And let's... Hmm, at this stage, I think let's do the um, the spokes technique. So if we come out from the pupil to the edge, we want to do a line um, as if it was the spoke of a bike coming out at that angle. And we'll do that all the way down. So not up over the top. Let's leave the top part of the eye um, from there to probably around there. We want to leave it. But otherwise, let's bring our spokes all the way around. If your spokes are thicker than this, that's absolutely fine. I think often thicker spokes look better. But I'll do them thin just to make it clear what direction they need to be going in as you go around. As you can see, like spokes of a bike, they're going from the centre to the edge, sort of radiating out around the eye. Okay, so we've got that. Um, let's now lighten that up. So I'm going to lighten it up with a bit of yellow. But I think I'll mix in a bit of white as well, because otherwise there just won't be enough contrast. Contrast is great. I've learned that over the years. Okay. Right, hopefully this is okay. So first thing I'm going to do with this lighter colour um, and you'll make sure that what you've done is already dry so you're not going to be um, dragging your fingers through it. I'm going to go around the edge of the iris with this lighter colour. 
And this is similar to how we did the tiger's eye, if you tried that one. Okay, so it disappears out of view there, but then comes back into view at this edge. If you've got more of a circle for your eye coming around, then sure enough, do this edging to it um, all the way around the outside. Okay, so I'm also going to do that around the pupil itself, but not up over the top again, because that's more in shadow, so we're leaving that. Okay. See, again, I'm twisting the brush to try and get a good angle on it. Right, once that's done, take that lighter colour, and we're going to go over some of the spokes lower down in the eye, because more light is passing through the eye and catching that, that lower part. And there's also the highlight on the top that we'll do in a sec. So maybe just up to around there. Okay, and then we'll do one more level of lightening of this. And this is the way that I often work. I'll work from, um, well, a middle tone to start with, and then I'll put in the shadows. And then from the middle tone, I'll slowly but surely lighten it until I get to the brightest highlights. And I usually finish up with the brightest highlights because, of course, those highlights, are, it's the light falling on top of things, so you want it to be the last thing that you do, really. But yeah, often it's, it's easiest to do your middle tones first and then, and then the shadows and then the highlights. That's the order of things that I like to do. Right, just doing a tiny bit more where the light's catching at these sort of extreme parts of the eye. Okay, I reckon that's about right for that. Okay, now for the final highlight. So we're going to take some of our blue and let's mix in some white. Lighten that up. Maybe need to lighten it up a bit more. Okay, that's pretty good. Right, I'm going to wipe off the excess. Wipe that off on the side. Okay, right, let's take that. And we're going to go initially up over the top of the eye like this. So if, if you've done other eye workshops with me, you'll know that this is the way I do the highlights. So up over the top like that. And then on the underneath of that, we can do a slightly more loose wobbly line coming down. Slightly more interesting in in the shapes that come underneath. Maybe back to around there. Okay, so the top part of that needs to be a smooth curved line, but underneath, you could even come down a bit further if you want. I mean, yeah, it can be fairly loose because different amounts of light would be shining on the eye in different circumstances. Okay. Right, so into that, give that a moment to dry. I think let's do two levels here. So let's do one level where we lighten it up yet further. So this is now really light blue. And I'm going to do along that top line with the lighter blue. And I think the sun's going to be shining around the back here, onto the eye, top right. I often do it that my highlights are coming down from the top right, or the light shining from the top right. Some, somehow that just works for me in my mind. Okay, and finally, I want that to be dry, but um, I'll have a go at this now. I need to take a good blob of that white, really good blob, and we're going to bring that down into that area of the lighter blue. And that's where the sun is shining down on the eye. Okay, I reckon that will do it. Let's leave that. Okay, so um, yeah, this one I'm hoping will have been a little bit more accessible again. The Hogwarts was quite tricky, um, but it's good to have um, 
opportunities for challenge as well. So if you if you'd still like to, please do give that one a go. Um, but yeah, send me your your efforts from the Phoenix Eye, and if you feel up to it, um, perhaps have a go like with the Dragon's Eye at doing a different breed of of phoenix's eye so maybe you could do kind of an azure phoenix where we've got everything reversed so it's the blues and greens in the feathers and it's reds and yellows in the eye maybe you could do a gold and silver phoenix so perhaps in some fancy land there's all these different species and kinds of phoenix um, that you can find uh, with with different kinds of wondrous colors maybe different um, feather patterns as well, so uh, by all means try that same feather pattern from the owl tutorial um, where we did more of the sort of the uh, the feathering or the, the fish boning going out from central lines that came out from the eye so you could have a go at that. Um, yeah, I'd love to see all your efforts um, and that you're, you're, you're being creative and I hope you all have a fantastic week. Hope you're doing well um, in these crazy times. And we've got to look out for one another and keep doing the things that make us happy. And um, that's what I keep telling myself is that I know what makes me happy and I just need to keep on doing those things uh, to stay positive. Okay, can't wait to um, see your results and uh, look forward to next week.